In this lecture, we're going to look at how we can predict whether a reaction is favorable or unfavorable. Uh, for instance, uh, we're going to look in this lecture at the reaction of glucose uh, combustion to form carbon dioxide and water. And here's the balanced equation for that. So for biochemical systems, the way we do this is we look at the change in the Gibbs free energy of the reaction, which is denoted as del G reaction. It's the standard del G of the reaction. And so what's nice about this for biochemical systems is that the Gibbs free energy, you'll remember, is denoted by G. Uh, and this is valid at constant pressure and constant temperature, which uh, most reactions in biochemical conditions uh, are under these conditions. And so you'll recall that when del G is less than zero, is a favorable reaction. Or the, probably the term you've heard is spontaneous. That's another way to say this. I prefer the term favorable. If del G of the reaction is instead greater than zero, then this is unfavorable. Or non-spontaneous. Correct these. There. Okay, so we can calculate whether this, uh, if the del G of the reaction is either positive or negative uh, based on the uh, change in Gibbs free energy for formation for both the products and the reactants. So this stems from using Hess's law, which can be used for any state function, such as enthalpy, entropy, uh, and in this case for Gibbs free energy. And so the change in the free energy of the reaction is going to be equal to the sum of the change in free energy for formation of the products minus the sum for the del G formation of the reactants. In practice, what this looks like for this balanced equation is that the products are carbon dioxide and water. And we need to extract the uh, heats of, for or the, uh, excuse me, the free energies of formation for each of these. So for carbon dioxide, this is negative 394.4 kilojoules per mole. For water, it's negative 237. 0.2 kilojoules per mole. And then we have to do the same for also the reactants, uh, which for oxygen is very simple, it's zero. And then for glucose, it's negative 910.6. Okay, now what we do for each of these, uh, we see from the stoichiometry of the balanced equation that there are six molecules of carbon dioxide uh, for six molecules of water on the product side, six molecules of oxygen on the reactant side, and only one molecule of glucose. So this is relevant because we have to multiply each of these uh, free energy of formation times the stoichiometry. So for the products, this is going to end up looking like, for carbon dioxide, uh, six times Negative 394. Oh, back up. Standard free energy change of the reaction is going to be equal to 6 times negative 394.4 kilojoules per mole plus. 6 times negative 237.2 kilojoules per mole. Okay, that's for water. This is for carbon dioxide, so that's our products. On the reactant side, we now have to subtract out glucose, 
which is negative 910.6 kilojoules per mole. And notice we're not multiplying this by anything because there's only one molecule of glucose, so we're multiplying by one. And add six molecules of oxygen times zero, which of course is zero. Add up all these terms, and what you end up with is a del, a change in the free energy of the reaction of negative 200, excuse me, negative 2,879.0 kilojoules per mole. This is a negative, the sign is negative, so this reaction is favorable or spontaneous.